I'm a film student. A lot of the time I get asked what got me interested in making videos in the first place. So I'll usually give an answer like, my brothers and I used to make YouTube videos together, which is true. But do you wanna know the real and deep, honest truth? The main thing that had me even conceptualize creating my own video ideas stems from the YouTube series Littlest Pet Shop Popular, a TV series that was made in 2010. This series was made 12 years ago and I still think about it all the time. to our live radio show every Friday on kvrx.org. Yo, yo! Meet our main character, Savannah Reed. Our main character, Savannah, is about to move to Orange County, California, where she is going to be reunited with her BFF since seventh grade, Brooklyn. So then, Savannah moves. Woo! Sophie GTV's production design is absolutely insane for this whole show. She did not have to go off with those palm trees. We are in California. And the paper towel rolls with the little locker pictures on them. I am not kidding. Everyone, everyone who ever made a Littlest Pet Shop series after this used the paper towel roll locker idea. She really set the standard. Hey, nice glasses. Oh, why thank you. I wasn't serious. <laughs> I do not remember the audio quality being this crunchy, but like, it makes the littlest pet shop clicking noises so much better. Ah! Sorry! <laughs> so a common theme you're gonna see throughout this show is that, like, no one ever helped you. You... <laughs> You can tell that Sophie GTV did literally every single thing herself because every single male character has the same exact voice and she has to take a little pause to move her hands from each character. I love it. Okay, thank you. I was shook whenever I saw that little pet shop picking up the papers by herself. Later I learned that there was just a little bit of tape put on the Littles Pet Shop's hand, but I was shook. I'm not even kidding. All of these little things throughout this whole series just made such a difference. It really set the tone for storytelling and it really, really made me conceptualize that like literally anything's possible. <laughs> Instantly, we get introduced to Lena and Jenny. It's pretty obvious that they're gonna be a little trio. It's pretty obvious that they're all besties now. That, my friends, is Sage Bond. He is a really important character for the rest of the show because he is the hottest guy in school. Let me be honest here, in every high school, there's the popular girls. Second, does the queen bee not look a little familiar to you? <gasps> Into that I say, let the drama begin. As an audience member, we discover that the queen bee is actually Savannah's old BFF, Brooklyn. And Brooklyn is dating Sage Bond, the hottest guy in school. Oh my gosh. Look at her, she's practically throwing herself on top of Sage. Avert your eyes, everyone, or risk being forever scarred. Let me remind you, I watched this when I was six years old. Anytime there was a kissing scene, I would feel so ashamed and so like, I should not be watching this right now. Like, and I used to watch the series on our home computer, like in an open area. So there was always a possibility of my brother walking by or my mom or my dad. So I would always have a different tab open just in case because I didn't want anyone to see me watching Little's Pet Shop kissing. Savannah learns about all of the different friend groups that sit in the cafeteria. I mean, cafe. Where's the cafeteria? Cafeteria? No, no, no. 
At OCD, we have a cafe. That's right. She's goes to a school that has a lot of money. Wow. So then I was like, um, do we have enough carrots? So which friend group are you in? Personally, I think I'm in. Get off, you pigs. I want some cheese too. <sighs> Literally none of these. I was just wondering what you were having for lunch. Lettuce. <laughs> the lettuce prop. I love it. Lettuce. Hi. Oh my gosh, Brooke. It's the loser again. Huh? Brookie, you totally remember me, right? So it's in this moment that you can really tell that Savannah was homeschooled. Oh my gosh, Brooklyn, I've missed you so much. And look at you, you're so beautiful. Give me a hug. Get off me. What? So then Savannah goes up to Brooklyn again, and Brooklyn lays it down and is like, girl, we are not going to be friends. Like, we're not friends anymore. But, Brookie, end of story. If you can't handle it, then you go right back on to M-Town, where you belong. Oh yeah, and my name is not Brooklyn or Brookie. My name is Brooke, and that's what you will call me. Brooke is such a good villain. This shit is so good. She is so mean for no reason. So then Savannah goes insane, starts raging, tearing everything apart in her room. Definitely won't be needing this anymore. If my friend had a huge ass poster of the two of us in her room, I would also be like, girl, I do not want to be friends with you. Like, what the fuck? I love that Sophie GTV's whole hand had to be in the frame whenever she was tearing apart the paper because she like has to. I don't need Brooklyn with her bratty little friends and her expensive clothes and her stupid but really hot boyfriend. Savannah's on the verge of a makeover because she's feeling super insecure at school and her friends want to do something nice for her so she feels like she fits in. Absolutely not. But mom! Savannah basically wants to dye her hair blonde and then her mom is like, can you just do something a little less drastic? And then Savannah rages. It's already absolutely gorgeous and you were lucky to be blessed with it. Thanks a lot, mom. You really don't want me to fit in, do you? <sighs> Savannah, there is no need to be so dramatic. Let's talk about this, okay? Nah, because Savannah's mom is the most stable character in this whole series so far. This makes me look huge. Ugh, my stomach. Why are my thighs so big? I like the little scarf though. It's a little scarf on a wiener dog. That's so cute. A big theme in this Littlest Pet Shop show is body image. Savannah starts to develop a big problem where she starts to compare her body to Brooklyn, which is awful for her self-esteem because Brooklyn's literally her ex-best friend. Yeah, this show tackles body dysmorphia. Also, no offense, but why is Savannah stressed out about her clothes? She literally showed up to school the first day naked. Okay, never mind. She literally didn't, but for some reason, everybody else around her did. So, okay. So then we get into the makeover sequence. This whole makeover sequence is such a slay. It lasts three minutes long and the whole episode is like eight minutes. Bruh, I thought they were just buying a bunch of clothes. What is in that box? Let me remind you, Savannah's mom did not let her dye her hair blonde. They settled on a soft red. This is the best part of the makeover sequence. They straight up put cum in Savannah's hair. Okay, I know for a fact that you guys have not seen 
any Littlest Pet Shop blink yet. Savannah is gonna go blind. The hair dye is directly going into her eyes. So Savannah's makeover is complete. And let me just say, this is where shit is about to get real. Savannah is the new it girl. That's right, guys. She completely changed breeds. Like, hey, Savannah. Must have been a really expensive surgery, right? I mean, usually surgery takes months to recover from. You would know, Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> There's a new hot girl in school, and Brooke cannot handle this. Well, at least I didn't borrow my hair color from a carrot. You're right, Brooke. It looks like you borrowed it from a banana. And then all of a sudden, Savannah's just spitting fire. Okay. Something wrong here, babe? Oh, hey, Sagey. <laughs> Something about seeing Little's Pet Shop making out still makes me super uncomfortable to this day. Something just feels so dirty about it. The noises. Like I said, Brooke cannot handle there being another hot girl in the school. So Brooke tells one of her minions, minions, banana? <laughs> She tells one of her minions to harass Savannah, and so Rachel squirts her pen all over Savannah's new makeover. So Savannah gets harassed with ink, and then this leads Sage Bond to go to the bathroom with Savannah to help her clean it up. And Sage Bond is all of a sudden being awfully nice to Savannah. And like, I wonder if it's because she's hot now. Did anyone else have that inkling? Rachel did that on purpose, you know. If she came with you, she probably would have made it worse. Really? She seems so sincere. I thought it was an accident. This is another moment where you can tell that Savannah was homeschooled. No problem. Oh, uh, sorry. Sorry. Did y'all see that? The tension, the tension. See you around, Savannah. Is anyone else wet right now? So then, in the way of an iconic three-way phone call, Savannah confesses to her BFFs that she has a crush on Sage. They encourage her to go after it, even though Brooke is an obvious obstacle. They're like, we don't give a f Let's take down Brooke. I think I like someone. Yeah! Who? A boy? Oh, please. Obviously a boy. Mm. Well, so what if it was a girl? Is that not okay? Like... And then the episode ends with Savannah struggling with her eating disorder again and basically pushing away her mom's help. You know, when I was six years old, body dysmorphia or the concept of an eating disorder did not even exist in my head. So this was really interesting to rewatch. So Savannah starts making some bold moves in order to steal Sage. Sage, how are you? Oh, uh, pretty good. Yourself? Yeah, I'm pretty good. Oh, what am I doing? Yeah, this is actually exactly how I talk to my crush. I'm a 20 year old young woman and I still struggle to talk to people that I'm attracted to. So I relate to this a lot. But lucky for Savannah, her English project is partner based. So her and Sage partner up and then Savannah invites him over later that day to work on the project. However, Rachel sits behind Savannah in English class and is aware of literally everything that's going on and tells Brooke. This is a very dangerous game to play. He's going to your house after school? Oh, guys, shh. What happened to being cool? See, Savvy, he totally likes you. I am so obsessed with every single food prop in this series. I love the just jar of bean. Hey, uh, Savvy? Is that all you're eating? Oh, uh, yeah. You haven't been eating much for lunch lately. The corn. I love. Listen, listen, like, obviously I'm not happy that these animal characters have eating disorders, but I think that it's so funny every single time they zoom in on, like, a little pet shop little food item. Anyways, wiener dog, I wouldn't try too hard. 
Maybe you're just meant to have a little extra pudge. <gasps> what did you just call her? So, wiener dog is a slur, basically. I can't believe she called you a... wiener dog. That is genius. <laughs> I love that Sophie GTV's whole wrist has to be in this shot in order for it to work. So yes, Brooke sucks, but Savannah's friends are awesome. So they have her back. So then Sage comes over to work on the English project and they immediately go to Savannah's bedroom. So, should we work in here? Sure, I'll get the stuff. Okay. Let me remind you that he did not give a f about her three episodes ago. Hey, are you gonna eat? Oh, nah, I'm not hungry. Oh great, you're not doing that starving thing, are you? <laughs> I think that's so stupid, that's so tone deaf. Imagine if a person struggled with eating on a regular basis and then someone was like, great, are you doing that starving thing? That is so awful, that's so horrible. But Sage is so hot, it doesn't even matter. Stop. Do you think their tongues touched whenever they both ate in the popcorn? Honestly, I have no idea what I'm doing. Here, this is what I've done so far. <laughs> <laughs> they like each other. It's so obvious. Okay. Awesome. I'm glad that was established. So obviously... They're a little distracted and they don't actually work on their English project. So they get distracted and they just start talking and then they make it to the bed. Everything is so superficial around here. So Nobody is really bothered to get to know She just falls asleep as he's opening up. That is so disrespectful. Sage, I think I have something to tell you. I have something to tell you too, Savannah. Oh. Sorry. Okay. So what do you think is gonna happen? What do you think is gonna happen? Savvy. I... No. Brooke. I... So Sage has to make a decision. Is he gonna date the hottest girl in the school? Or is he gonna date the other hottest girl in the school? He is a really tough decision to make here. Sage is such a little cutie. Sage brings a rose to school. We, the audience, are very much under the impression that Savannah and Sage are gonna end up together. And then there's a little moment where it's revealed that Brooke has actually cheated on Sage before. Just keep that in mind moving forward. Is your girlfriend here today? <laughs> nope. So you see this face? You see this glowing man's face? You need to remember him. He's very important moving forward. So as Savvy and Seiji are just cracking jokes with each other in the hallway, Brooke approaches Sage with tears in her eyes. Brooke, are you crying? Y you know, I hate seeing you cry. Just follow me, please. Okay, actually hold up. I. Is Brooke sweating or crying? So then Brooke and Sage talk. Brooke basically just makes up a bunch of fake shit about Savannah to turn Sage against her. So just like that, Sage doesn't like Savannah anymore. And yeah, he decides to stay with Brooke even though he was literally just about to cheat on her. He is such a good boyfriend and so hot. He's so hot. She told me that I was fat and that I had a big tail. What? So I honestly ship Savannah and Sage because they're both just so dumb. I overheard her telling that Lena girl that it's her goal this year to kiss all the boys on the football team. And she's starting with you. Okay, like what's wrong with that? Like at least she's ambitious, like. She also has this rare skin disease. Underneath her fur, it's all red and bumpy and oozes pus. You didn't touch her, did you? She's contagious. What? How dumb is Sage? Oh my God, he is so dumb. So then, yeah, Sage just immediately starts avoiding the f out of Savannah. So you can imagine Savannah's like, boy, what? We were just talking five minutes ago. Um, no, I'm kind of busy for 
the whole month. Oh, uh, wait, so how are they gonna finish their English project then? No, what are they gonna do? Has your rash gotten any better? What? Um, what are you talking about? Oh, you know, the rash that turns green and oozes pus. What? Ew. Ew. Brooke is back on her shit. She turns the whole f school against Savannah with a bunch of just made up lies. And truly in this moment, she reestablishes her title as the queen bee. And Brooke and Seiji Weiji are back to making out in the hallways. My favorite part. My favorite part. The main thing you need to know is that right now, the whole school does not like Savannah, except Savannah runs into this guy who's carrying a bunch of dog treats on a sled in the middle of the hallway. This is our introduction to a brand new character, Tom. Doesn't he look a little bit familiar? Tom lets her know that he doesn't believe any of these rumors, but if she's trying to kiss every single boy on the football team, he is into that. Look at you. I'm surprised the wind doesn't carry you off. Thanks. I guess. Okay, we get it. She's skinny. Can we like calm down with that actually? Holy crap. So for the rest of this episode, we get an inside scoop to Brooke's life. And guess what? Her parents are super absent from her life. And that's what makes her a super awful person to be around. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Let me reinstate that Savannah's mom rocks. She gives a little note to Savannah that reminds her to show the school what they're missing. So you know what that means. Looking hot! At school, someone is blocking Brooke's way. So she physically assaults them. So Savannah shows up to school looking hotter than ever and shows everyone what they're missing. And just like that, she's back in the game. Hey, Savannah, how's your rash? <laughs> <laughs> so some gross weasel with chicken pox asks Savannah how her rash is and Savannah snaps back. Hey David, how's your acne? <gasps> oh wait, my bad, it's acne. Okay, that's okay, that's a human thing. Cause from what I see, the situation doesn't look too promising. <gasps> <gasps> so in order to show everyone what they're missing, Savannah just casually ruins people's lives. Is it true you kiss any boy you can get your hands on? That's what I heard too. Oh really? Well, does this answer your question? <laughs> what is she doing? Girl, calm down. Don't look. Just keep kissing. Okay, so yeah, y'all get the premise. Savannah's hot. But I don't think it's that far-fetched of me to say that she's also extremely annoying all of a sudden. And she's starting to remind me a little bit of Brooke. Wait a second. The internalized misogyny is coming out. I just, I just don't get it. She was so, she was nothing. Now shut your mouth and kiss me. Your girlfriend is so awesome, Sage. She's so awesome. So now Sage is a little confused. He sees Savannah being this cool ass girl that she's always been, but he feels lost because she did those really hurtful things to Brooke, right? Next scene, Savannah has English with Seiji Weiji and then Sage and Brooke make out for like one minute straight. I'm not kidding. That scene takes up an entire minute of the episode. So then Savannah calls out Sage, says she doesn't want to do the projects with him anymore. And then right after that, Tom casually pulls up into the classroom and then they get assigned partners. Mr. Burke, my buddy. Oh gosh. Hello, Tom. Mind if I steal the spot, Sagester? Uh, not at all, Tom. Here. Cool. Okay, I'ma say it. The best way to get back at a man is with another man. Now, do I encourage this behavior? Absolutely not. But am I telling a lie? No. Whoa. You smell amazing. Then things start to get sexy in the classroom and Tom and Savannah start 
in the middle of the classroom. There might have been this girl involved. A girl? Really? Tell me about her. Well, she's really cute. Beautiful, actually. And, uh, had my eye on her ever since she came to the school. Really? I mean, do I know this girl? Oh, well, I think you know her quite well. Stop! Because if I saw that shit in a public high school classroom, I would be like, can y'all stop? No one likes you. Can I be that character in the show where I'm just like constantly giving everyone a reality check? Can you guys stop making everyone so uncomfortable? Savannah and her friends get invited to sit with the football boys at lunch. Holy. In case you forgot, let me remind you that this happened. Tom? <laughs> Is your girlfriend here today? <laughs> nope. Nope. Do you think I could have voiced over for any of these characters? So basically, yeah. Brooke's plan is backfiring AF. And Savannah is actually becoming more popular than Brooke. Brooke cannot handle the fact that Savannah is at the football table. She literally has heart palpitations because she cannot handle the fact. So then Tom goes to the bathroom during lunch and Brooke runs after him. And it's just a little sus. We don't actually know like what's going on, but they're just being a little sus. It's two minutes to the bell. We better get going. Oh, okay. See you later, Nathan. Bye. Isn't that literally one of Brooke's friend's boyfriends? Why is everyone cheating on everyone in this school? Do only 10 people go to this school? Bye. I know you're probably wondering why I was talking to her. She was just asking about some social studies homework. Oh, no. I wasn't wondering. Oh, okay. Well, uh, just so you know, I'm a one girl kind of guy. Really? Who's your one girl? So they've only known each other for one day, right? Like they didn't even know about each other in high school beforehand. I don't know about y'all, but I did not trust any of the men that I went to high school with. Most of them were genuinely so crusty and gross and the actual hot ones were so annoying. And that doesn't really have anything to do with this series. I'm just not over it and I'm still upset about it to this day. Hey, Savannah, I really like your bow. Wow. Thanks. Yeah, it's so fashion forward. I've never seen anyone wear anything like that. Everyone starts to express their obsession with Savannah because she wore a bow to school. One of the funniest things about this whole series is that the fashion matters. The options that Little's Pet Shop sold for clothing were so limited. Like this pink scarf that's popped up multiple times in the series. I don't even think that's a Little's Pet Shop scarf. I literally, I think that's Polly Pocket actually. Like, I wouldn't know. It's even nicer than Brooke's outfit. Really? Oh, thank you. I love that every person in the school just constantly compares Savannah and Brooke. There are only two girls that matter in the whole school and everyone feeds into it. Did I miss much? Nope, but I missed you much. What the fur? If I knew a guy for one day and he said that to me in class, stop, I would lose it. I would instantly fall so in love with him. I would instantly fall so hard for him. Have you seen you Sage since school? lunch? Uh, yeah, he's in his class, Brooks. That's what you do at school. Why hasn't he visited me? Or at least texted me. <gasps> Usually he texts me around this time so we can meet in the girl's bathroom on the third floor to make out. Hey Brooke, how about you and me meet on the third floor and make out? You okay. wish, Nathan. What is happening? Isn't he literally dating Brooke's friend that is sitting right beside her in this moment? There are 10 people in this school and everyone just cheats on each other. I wish I went to this school so bad. Basically, Brooke is super freaking angry this whole episode. Sage didn't come up to her lunch table and start making out with her like he usually does in front of everybody. And he didn't break into her classroom and start making out with her like he usually does. So she's pissed off today. Brooke is starting to feel really threatened because whether she wants to admit it or not, she can recognize that her popularity 
is slipping right through her fingertips.